Hi guys, Namek here. I'm going to give you a quick demonstration and overview of my new mastering software, Blackbox. Da da da, there she is. Um, yeah, basically Blackbox is um, a very quick all-in-one solution just to, to uh, get your music sounding better, get it ready for, for online streaming, um, for 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 any YouTube videos, whatever whatever you want to use it for. Um, comes in two flavors, trial version and, and a paid for one, obviously. Um, the uh, limitations are quite lax. You know, you can process up to five minutes of audio without um, having to buy a license. Um, you can record at 16 bit, bit depth. Um, and obviously the uh, paid for version is completely unlimited, how, how much processing you do. And uh, yeah, you can save at 24 bit as well. Um, yeah, Black Box is basically an all in one solution. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how it works. Let me just drag an audio file. This is one of my friends, Carl Daniel's track called The Sound. Um, so yeah, you can, you can, standard controls, you can play back audio on the interface. Boom. So that 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 works quite nicely. Um, yeah, but where it comes into its own, you get to just just pick a few things for for, for flavor really on your track. Um, basically, what the, what it'll do is it will balance the track first. Uh, it'll, it'll basically normalize all the EQs. It'll do a bit of um, bit of culling on on the samples, like replicate what optical compression does, and it'll no normalize it into a level where um, limiters and compressors can can work most effectively. Um, so you've got controls like the low frequency cut where where the sounds actually get rid of all the rumble and then you've got the sub enhancement which is basically a specialized EQ for making the the really subby sounds um, nice loud without being too thumpy. Um, then there's the uh, body level. Y you might want to knock a little bit of uh, uh, that out because that's where all the nasty, noisy range is. Um, clarity, if there's vocals in the tracks, it kind of augments sort of like the vocal region a little bit. Uh, brightness, which is basically um, a slightly more advanced high shel shelf system. Um, so it's, got, it's kind of like a Baxendahl curve EQ. Um, if you don't know what Bax and Dolly, look them up, but they're, they're quite good at sort of um, wider, wider area EQs, and it, it sounds a bit more natural. It, it doesn't sound a, as 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 gritty or pushy in a region like a, a normal graphic equalizer can be. Um, then obviously we have loudness, which is quite important in the mastering chain. Um, and then there's a compression setting. Now this compression setting kind of works for not just the finalizing finalized compression, but it also affects the the uh, multi pan compression. Uh, in black boxes, uh, there's like a three three stage uh, three band compre compressor on each channel, um, which uh, obviously de it detects its uh, what, what all the settings should be, and the compression setting is basically how much to push that setting. Uh, as opposed to you, you define it. So I kept it nice and simple. Um, it all kind of works itself out uh, based on a load of good practices and all, all the research I found online and all the stuff I, I do when I'm mastering my own tracks. Um, I basically put put all those chains in there as uh, as part of the, this this process. And um, yeah, the final setting is the quality control. Now the reason why that's that there's um, all the filtering's done uh, with a linear phase filter that I've I've designed. Um, I use linear phase. Well, I always use linear phase in the, the mastering side because it's it's the least effect. There's no phase issues, um, so when I'm you can you can be quite surgical with with how you use the EQ. You can you can push it quite hard with linear phase without it causing any. Um, Weird filtery sounds between that and the and the neighbor neighboring uh, band, and and that 
the quality directly relates to the number of taps that are used to uh, used to uh, filter the signal. Um, if you don't want to tap his, then just look up um, like linear phase filtering or, or FIR filtering or, or something like that, and you get get sort of like an idea of, of how it, how it all works. So if I'm jumping jumping into the program, um, you can see. Yeah, I, I've just I'll just process a small, a small. You can you can process a small section to test these sets of settings because a lot of these aren't real time. Um, there's also a, a backwards transient compression, which is basically reverses the track and 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 detects transient uh, transient sounds on the reverse. So it create before the transient actually hits it, it will uh, create a bit of space just before it, making the transient sound louder and a bit more prominent without without. Um, Losing any of the fidelity within the track, so it it, it has unique process that you can't do in in real time or linear linear time. Okay, so if I just go back onto this program and set the quality quite high, um, actually it's, it's a good to, to note that the quality setting and the time it takes to process as well are very very sort of linked together. The longer the higher the quality, the longer it's going to take to process just because of the nature of uh, the filters used. Uh, okay, so if I process that small section here, you're about to process the se current selection. Okay, now it's um, going through all the bass bands. Uh, there's there's about four or five EQs in the bass band. Um, I think there's seven in the mid range, and there's another another five on the high end. Um, they're all detected automatically based on the music or the musical content, and that's finished. Okay, so. Uh, I put in an A/B control so you can listen to the, listen back to the audio and then uh, listen to what changes are made. Okay, so you can hear the there between. Um, yeah, the original and 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 what what's been processed, you it's, you can tell it's a lot louder. It's it's polished. It's it's balanced, but it has a lot of presence as well. Um, and that's basically what Black Box does. Uh, it gets your music ready to go out online. Um, it's not before before we get into the replacing the mastering engineer. No, it's not meant to replace a mastering engineer, but it does a good job. It does. It comes really close. Um, and it compares directly with the likes of um, some of the online online services like Lambda or Emastered or whatnot. Uh, but the beauty about this, it's on your desktop, and you don't have to rely on 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 a platform as a service. Their platforms as a service, um, you just rely on what you've got on your desktop. So that's it. Um, quick overview of, of Blackbox. I'll put some more videos up soon about um, getting the most out of different styles of tracks, maybe. Um, more demonstrations, but if you just go straight to, if you look here, we've got uh, presets. They're just a few presets. That's just one I was messing around with. You can create your own based on based on certain settings. So silly preset. So you, if if you have a way of uh, mastering your own album or EP or something, you want to use all the same settings or recall settings at a later date. You can um, simply just flick through these. Uh, yep, that's it. Black box audio mastering. Uh, check it out. Namek out.